Hi, this is episode 84 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. In this section on understanding the solid development pattern, we're going to walk through the single responsibility principle. While the concept of single responsibility has been around for quite a while, it was popularized in 2003 by Uncle Bob. So what exactly is the single responsibility principle? The term is pretty self-descriptive. Essentially, it means that each class and module in a program should focus on a single task. Before we go into a code example, let's look at a real-world case study of a vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner can perform a number of tasks, such as cleaning floors and upholstery. Some of the more upscale vacuums can even work like a blower. However, notice how at its core, a vacuum has an engine that utilizes air to perform the task of cleaning. It wouldn't make sense for a vacuum cleaner to also wash windows. If you introduce this type of feature to the vacuum, it may work for a while but then it would most likely cause increased maintenance costs and it would inevitably break down. Now that you have an idea on how the single responsibility principle works in the real world, let's dive into a code example. Here we have an invoice class that seems to be relatively straightforward. The class prints out details about the invoice, calculates sales tax, and emails the invoice with its details. When we run the code, everything works fine. This may seem fine at first, however, the code is breaking the single responsibility principle in a number of ways. When it comes to following the solid design pattern, a good rule of thumb that if your description of a class has the word AND in it, then it may need to be refactored. For example, let's describe this class. The invoice class prints out invoice details AND calculates sales tax AND emails the invoice. Whenever I'm performing a refactor, I like to treat the behavior between the ands as their own class. So let's refactor this code, starting with the email feature. Here we have created a new class called mailer that has a single method that will send out an email. The email takes an argument where we can pass the invoice details to it and eventually we could add anything else we wanted to if we really needed to. If we run this code, we'll see that it's still working properly. Next is our sales tax feature. This component definitely shouldn't be included in the invoice class since it doesn't really take much imagination to realize that this feature may be required by other parts of the application outside of the invoice. Here we create a sales tax class that takes in the state we want to generate the sales tax for. Running this code will show that our program is still working perfectly. And now, if we look at our invoice class, you'll see that it's following the single responsibility principle. Notice how the invoice is no longer in charge of generating sales tax or emailing customers. So why is this type of design pattern important? Our initial invoice code worked fine, so why would we have to change it? Let's imagine that our program was used by a real-world accounting division. What if a user wanted to see what the tax rate would be for a specific state? It wouldn't make any sense for the system to require the user to create an invoice just to calculate that tax value. By refactoring the program in the way we did in this guide, our sales tax class could be used independently or by any other classes that need that feature, such as a project estimator or anything like that. In the computer science world, this concept is called coupling. In our initial code example, the sales tax component was highly coupled to the invoice class. This means that it would be messy to work with the tax rate generator without having to also work with the invoice class. Our refactor fixed this issue, and now we can say that the tax feature has low coupling, which means that users can access the tax rate component without having to work with the invoice class. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to understanding the solid design pattern of single responsibility, and good luck with the coding.